I've done this one before, so this is like a premiere. They were waiting for a good opportunity to do it, and you seem like a very nice and receptive crowd, so I thought I'd try it out. Um, so I hope you like it. I uh, apologise if I mess it up. I've got my cue sheet here because I've got my line in front of Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club a couple of weeks ago, and it was the most terrifying experience of my life. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to be cocky this time. <coughs> this is called Holding Hands. 1998, Manchester. In the midst of one of those summers we used to get where you could rightly expect that the hazy midday air would hang as heavy with promise as humidity. A shifty kid at Piccadilly paces marble tiled floors, still too young for his eventual chain smoking floor to have come to fore, and so instead he chews. His tinted window stained views of concourse and of course he attempts to affect an air of indifference regarding his situation, this contrived complacence at odd with hammering heartbeat and damp palms deep in pockets. He's waiting. He's waiting for everything to change. He's waiting for a moment after which he is sure nothing could possibly be the same and he does not have to wait long. And yet, the late comer's arrival goes unheralded by choir song, and now the flutters in their tummies or the email promised fire's gone, yet they press on, cause the day's about something bigger than the jitters racking either one. They meander, wander, stroll streets that ignore them with the practiced indifference of concrete. Syncopated footfalls echo off the brick walls, nerves shift, moods lift, and this weird rift twixt the two slowly drifts away, and yet they still don't have that much to say. <laughs> Not that it matters. Jilted patters simply filling gaps between smiles, they ramble for what seems miles before accidentally arriving at their intended destination. Just a couple minutes direct walk from Piccadilly Station. Suddenly, they stand stunned beneath vandalised street sign etched in adolescent minds by umpteen small screen VHS viewings of their favourite show and just like that, it's time to go. Bold as brass, the latecomer takes early bird's grasp and as those hands clasp for the first time, smiles split, shoulders lifts just as if the weight of the world had evaporated in the heat. The sun beats down on the pair as they stride, heads high, grins wide, canal side, and cavorting gaily in every possible sense. Unafraid, unabashed, and unashamed of being them, they hold fast, walk slow, as each step down this road brings more hope that maybe, maybe it could be like this. Maybe they both could exist in openness and never miss another kiss from perfect lips of that one boy. <laughs> Whoever that turns out to be, because see there's blatantly little chemistry between these two, but they don't need true lovers. They're discovering nascent pride side by side, hand in hand and hearts on sleeves. Ironically, it is outside the new union that this new union must part ways. See, latecomer can't stay, mum's home at four on Saturdays, so they embrace, kiss cheeks and squeeze their palms together one more time. Then fingers split apart, departing trains to grey train lines. I wish I remembered your name now. I know I think of that day fondly, I still feel like it's a shame how a simple clasp of fingers ever had to feel defiant. They're made for interleaving, genders never predefined, and so to find a little glimpse at why so many kids are blue. Imagine growing up believing that holding hands was a taboo. Thank you.